Hello everybody! Happy Art Day! Welcome to Freakin' Art! I'm Anastasia and I'm so happy you decided to join me today to make some art! So today we're going to talk about process-based art. We have talked about this before if you watch my videos on a weekly basis. But process-based art is when the actual process or the system of making the art is more important than the final outcome of your artwork itself. So for today's class, we're going to do a really cool, like, surprise painting, I would call it, <laughs> where our process is super important. So before we start, Let's do a little bit of breathing and stretch so we feel really focused and ready to make our art. Are you ready? Okay. Everybody breathe in. And breathe out. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in. And breathe out. Now let's roll our shoulders back. And roll them forward. And interlace our fingers and stretch out those hands and fingers and arms. Whoa! Whoa! That felt good. I feel focused and ready to make some art. I hope you do too. So for today's class, we're going to need some paint. I'm using two of my primary colors, my yellow and red. This is kind of a pinkish red, but it's close. So I got yellow and red, and then you're also going to need some black paint. Now, the colors could be whatever colors you want, but let's have at least some light colors and some dark colors. You're also going to need a little bit of water and some paint brushes. A palette or a plate to put those paint on, some paper towels, a business card or an old gift card. If you don't have that, you could just use some cardboard and some scissors and some paper and maybe you want tape. This is optional. So for today's class, we're doing a surprise painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint the background of a piece of paper, one color or two colors or as many colors as you want, but they should be light and or bright. And then once that dries, we're going to paint some black paint on top of that and use our cool tool that we make out of our card to create some lines. And then the back painting will show through the front. Isn't that cool? I think so. Now this is done all using the temper paint. For this one, I did watercolor paint in the background and then did the black temper paint on top. And it's pretty slim, similar. I would just say the tempera or the poster paint is going to be a little bit brighter. Let's move some stuff out of the way. Okay, let's start with our piece of paper and we're going to paint the whole thing a light bright color or two or three. You could do whatever you want. Just maybe do it a little bit thinner so it can dry. I'm going to be using my yellow and magenta. And I'm putting it in my palette, which if you have a palette, you could use that. Or you could also use a plate so I don't mess up my colors by mixing them together. So first things first, we're just going to paint the whole page. Now you could paint a cool design or shapes or just colors. It's up to you. I'm not going to do anything fancy on the bottom here. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Just so you have a good base. 
of what to go off of. But don't let what I'm doing stop you from doing what you want to do. It's your artwork and it should look like your artwork. And remember, our imagination is the only limitation. Okay, I got a lot of yellow on here. I'm going to clean off my brush so I don't mess up my magenta paint. Now I'm going to take my magenta pinky red color here and cover the rest. So again, it doesn't matter what colors you use. It does work better if you use bright or light colors on the back. And it doesn't matter what kind of pattern you do. We just want to cover the whole thing. Okay, now that we have our whole page covered, you can see it's curling up because it got a little bit wet, but once it dries, we'll just curl it back the other way. So let's put our painted page to the side because we need it to dry all the way before we can do the next step in our process-based surprise painting. Now the next thing we're going to do is take our old gift card or business card and cut some shapes out of the side because we're going to be using this kind of like a comb to peel off that black paint on the top. So you just take your scissors and you can do whatever you want. You could cut on all the edges. I'm just cutting little triangles out. That's going to look cool. Maybe I'll do some other marks. Cut out some other marks on this other side. It doesn't have to be even or regular. It's really whatever you want to do. And if you don't have a business card or an old gift card to use, you could always use something like a fork or a comb as long as you're using washable paint and the adult in your house doesn't care it'll be fine you just need something that would scrape off that top layer of paint okay so i got some funky different shapes here on both sides i will say that the plasticky gift cards are going to work a little bit better than the cardboard of a business card just because it's stiffer okay now, your base layer of paint's probably not dry yet, so maybe go get a snack or do a little stretch or paint a couple more of your base layers. I thought ahead and did some yesterday, so I'm going to put this to the side, and I have these already dry ones. Now, it's important that it's already dry, so when you put the paint down, the top layer of black paint, or you could use dark blue or dark purple, artist choice that it doesn't pull up the paint below. So I'm actually going to tape my piece of paper down so it's easier to work with. You don't have to do this. You can always use your fingers and hold down one side as you go. Otherwise, if you have some tape, you can tape down your dried painting which will also leave a pretty nice border of color. Again, it's up to you. You know how you work best. Okay. <laughs> now I would say that watercolor paper or thicker cardstock paper is gonna work a little bit better for this project, just cause we're doing lots of layers of paint, but don't let the type of paper you have keep you from making your artwork okay I'm sure you could make it work and still get the general idea if I was doing this at home with you I would be doing it flat on the table I might still tape it down just because then I could feel free to move around with my cool tool I made but uh, it's not necessarily taped down just maybe makes it a little bit easier okay so we have our dry colorful background now we're going to take our black paint or if you have dark blue or dark purple that would work too and put it on our palette or or our plate 
Now make sure your dr uh, brush is pretty dry and then clean so you don't get a muddy color. And we're going to take the black and we're going to try to do this really quickly so it doesn't dry. So we're going to cover the whole beautiful colored painting you have right here with some black. But we're going to do it real quick. Okay, so now we should all have a black painting basically. My black paint is not as rich or opaque as I'd like it to be. Like you can see a little bit of the color coming through, but I'm not going to let it get me down. I'm just going to go ahead, let it go, and enjoy this process of making my painting. So take the tool you made with your business card or gift card. And you're going to press down. You can start wherever you want. You could do one line across. You could do as many marks as you want. But you press down. Voila! It's like magic. You scrape off that paint. And then you get this really nice contrast. That's the difference between that dark, dark black, and that colorful, bright colors that you got coming from behind. So really there's no right or wrong of how to make your marks. It's up to you. See how the business card works. And you might want to wipe off that card as you go so you don't smush your black that you scraped up off back on your painting. Now I think that looks pretty nice. We can try another one. So I'm going to take off this tape here. There we go. I like it this way. Another nice thing about putting the tape down is it creates a really colorful border almost like you're framing your process based painting. Isn't that nice? I think so. Should we do one more? Let's try it out. Again I have my dried so again you might need to take a little break and have a snack before your painting's totally dry, but I have my dry background painting for my process based piece. I'm going to take some new tape since that has some wet paint on it. And again, this is not a necessary step. It just makes it a little bit easier to scrape up that paint without moving your painting all around. So it helps us get some real good marks. Now, if you decided to draw or paint a whole scene under here, that would be super cool too. I just went with the colors because it still looks nice and it's really simple and easy to do so it wouldn't be overwhelming. But just imagine if you painted some hearts or flowers or trees or whatever it was and then when you scraped away that black layer, you showed a little bit of your magical world underneath. Wouldn't that be cool? I think so. So again, I have my black paint. I'm putting it in my palette. And I'm gonna go real quick and try to cover the whole thing real quickly so my paint doesn't dry. Okay. So we got the black on there. Let's get our cool business card tool we made and do some marks. Again, whatever marks you want. And like I said, if you had a fork, that would work. What else would make it cool? The knife would work. Just. You know, you can think of anything. A comb would work really well. 
really anything that's going to scrape up that paint. Oh, that looks really nice. I like the different whiffs we have going on here. And remember, there's no right or wrong. It's just a cool way to make an image. Okay, let's try that out. First, I'm going to get this black off my fingers so I don't mess up my really cool border when I'm pulling off my tape here. Yeah, I like it like that. There we go. I think that looks great. So here are our really cool process-based paintings, which I'm going to call surprise paintings. I think they look really nice with the dark, dark black against that bright yellow and pink. I think it looks really beautiful. Now, I can't wait to see your pieces, so please tag me on Instagram or send me some snail mail and we can look at them together next week. If you like today's class, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. It really helps me continue to make these fun art classes for you here on YouTube. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself today. At least you have another idea of how to make some paintings. Well, I'll see you guys next week, okay? Bye!